We already have a couple videos going over Google discovery campaigns, but I will admit they are pretty outdated. So in this video, I want to refresh it and bring it up to date with the new way that you can set up Google discovery campaigns in Google ads for 2023. Before I go into Google ads and show you how to create a discovery campaign, I want to talk about where discovery ads can appear. So looking at the image that's on the screen right now, I'm going to go from left to right. And the first one is going to be YouTube. And there's a couple options with YouTube. What you're seeing in the image right now is YouTube home. And if you frequent the YouTube homepage a lot, most likely you've seen an example of a discovery ad. As you're scrolling through recommended content on the homepage, in between some of the video search results, you could see a discovery ad. Now, besides just the YouTube homepage, users can see discovery ads in the watch next module. This is a dynamic section within YouTube that will show viewers content that they haven't seen yet. Now that's from the video side. Within this module, while YouTube is trying to recommend new video content, users may also potentially see some discovery ads. Now the middle image on the screen right now is Google's Discover. A user has to go to google.com, type in a specific search query. Certain queries aren't going to trigger typical results. Google may determine that certain content is in a better interest to show to the user instead. It's a more personalized experience, and part of the personalization of the content could be showing a discovery ad. And then the final image on the right will be Gmail. This could be via the Gmail app, desktop platform, whatever. But a typical Gmail setup is your main inbox. And then there are default additional tabs, promotions, and social. And discovery ads will appear in a Gmail ad format only on the promotions and social tabs. If a Gmail user decides to create additional folders, ads will not appear in those. Again, it's just promotions and social tabs within Gmail. We used to be able to create dedicated Gmail campaigns. Those went away a long time ago, and they were folded into Discovery. So if you want to run Gmail campaigns, you have to run an entire Discovery campaign. You cannot pick just the Gmail placement. So now that you have an understanding of where your ads can appear, let's go into Google Ads and start creating a campaign. Now that we're in Google Ads, let's go and create a new campaign. So I'm going to head over to the blue plus button, click on it, and then create a new campaign. And the first thing we do in every new campaign creation is select a campaign objective. For a discovery campaign, we have four options. I am already highlighted over sales. That is an option for discovery, but we also have leads, website traffic, and then choosing to create a campaign without a goals guidance. Just for the sake of this video, I'm going to stick with leads. After we do that, we have to select a conversion goal. With a discovery campaign, you must choose at least one conversion goal for the campaign. You're going to find out very soon that a lot of discovery is automated. And part of the automation process is to optimize towards a specific goal. So if you're brand new to Google ads, you need to make sure that you have conversion tracking set up first. We have default ones here from previous videos that we made. Go ahead and add additional goals if you want to optimize towards something different. But once your goals are chosen, you can go ahead and click continue. Now we're at the part where we can choose the specific campaign type. And of course, we want discovery. After we choose the campaign type, you can see Google Ads is asking us to put in the web page people will go to after clicking your ad. Essentially, this is our landing page. They just pasted something in for now. Feel free to change the campaign name, and then we can continue. Next, we'll be able to look at our campaign settings. And if I do a quick scroll all the way down and back up, you might notice that it's pretty limited, and it is. Even if you choose the campaign objective of going without a goals guidance, we still lose a lot of control with discovery campaigns. So we already have our conversion selected. That's what we kind of looked at in the previous screen. Next, you will choose your locations. Feel free to change your languages. There's biddings, your daily budget. Just put something in there for now. And then when you click on more settings, there are a few additional options. So going back up a little bit to bidding, Manual bidding is not an option for discovery campaigns. So based upon my current selections, Google's offering me maximized conversions. I did choose lead gen as my campaign objective, if you remember. There are a few more additional automated bidding options if you choose a different campaign objective, but Google is really going to rely on their machine learning for the bidding strategy. So again, manual bidding is not an option. And then we go down to additional settings. Here are a few of the additional campaign settings that you typically see in a setup that aren't included for discovery. The first one is device targeting. We cannot adjust based upon the device type, maybe the operating system or model. Google will have total control over that. Another one that you see that's missing from the more settings dropdown is frequency capping. Google will have complete control over how many impressions each user will get. We're also missing ad rotation. 
This is an advanced setting where we typically can tell Google to try to rotate the ads more evenly or try to have Google showcase the better performing ad more frequently. Google will have control over that as well. And then if we try to click down to content exclusions, while they show it to us, Google has complete control over the content exclusions as well, even overriding any account level settings. So they stress that brand safety is very important to them, but we have found that this isn't always perfect. So definitely keep that in mind. What you can do if I go to the more settings one more time is that you do have campaign URL options. So within the previous screen, we did put in the ad URL. If you have a tracking template set up at the account level, you don't have to worry about this if you're good with your account level template. But if this specific campaign needs something different, you can update it here. Just remember your campaign level templates will override any account level templates. So from here, I'm just gonna click next. And here we get to targeting. This is another section within the discovery campaign process that isn't going to be as robust as other types of campaigns. So if we look at trying to add an audience, there's a custom segment that we already have created, but you can go up and add a new audience. You can make an audience off of custom segments. And if you wanna know more about custom segments, you can watch a video here, or you can choose to make an audience, which is essentially a variety of remarketing audiences. If I go and browse, so then here are the remarketing options that you have within Google Ads. We have a more in-depth video about the remarketing options within Google Ads. You could check that one out here. Now, honestly, when I'm trying discovery for a new client, I typically do start with remarketing. I wanna see how users who are already familiar with the brand engage with discovery. Learn from that first before deciding to expand my reach to a wider audience. But I will admit, I don't have clients that have incredibly insane massive budgets that really just wanna spread their reach. So if you have tighter budgets, not as much room to really test things out, think about starting with remarketing first. And then if I click off of this, the other options we can use to help create our audience for discovery will be your in-market segments, your life events, affinity audiences, as well as detailed demographics. And then if you wanna get more specific, you can add exclusions to your audience, narrow it down by specific genders and ages, just canceling everything out for now. And then when you save your new audience, it'll now be an option for you to select it to target for discovery. Now you probably notice that there are a few targeting options missing. The first one is gonna be contextual targeting, the ability to target keywords based on the content that the user might be viewing or interacting with at the moment. That is not an option for discovery campaigns. Your best bet there would be to try to create a custom segment, formerly known as custom intent, that's why I called it that, to try to reach those users based upon previous interests. The other option that's missing, and this one makes a little bit more sense, is placement targeting. So this goes back to what I said about Gmail. You cannot tell Google only target Gmail or only target the YouTube homepage. Another question people have is, well, when they're recommending videos, can I choose the specific YouTube channel where they're recommending videos? No, you can't do that either. You can't pick any placement whatsoever. It's gonna be controlled completely by Google. So as we can see from what we just did right now, choosing an audience or creating a new one, that discovery campaigns are an audience focused targeting. We're focusing on the user and their behavior, not necessarily where they are at the moment. And of course, automatically, Google's gonna to try to get you to turn on optimized targeting. I have not seen anything useful come from this option, but I'm gonna turn the option off for now, and then we can hit next to go to the ad creation. I zoomed out a little bit just so we have a better chance to see the preview while I'm going through the ad setup. So sorry if things are a little small, but right off the bat for our new discovery ad, they put in the URL that we first entered within the campaign creation process. If you realize you did not want to use that URL, well, you can go ahead and change it here. But the first thing that we'll want to do is add our image assets. So if I click on the plus images, Google will recommend a variety of them. Give us some free stock image ones. We can go to the fairly new asset library. I did make another video about the Google Asset Library. If you're interested about that one, you could check it out here. But for now, I'm just gonna select a variety of images, I'm trying to get close to the 20 that's recommended as possible. But if you don't have a lot of images in your asset library, I did say that you could use the free stock images, or you can go ahead, type in your site's URL. Google will try to find images that are available on your site that you can use, as well as scan your social media profiles if you do have them. But for now, I'm just going to save. And we're already starting to get an idea of how our discovery ads could look on different placements. For now, I'm going to pause this. But once we're done constructing our ad, I'll go through the preview and we can see what it could look like on all the properties. Next, you can add up to five logos. For us, we already have those in our asset library. Thanks to previous videos, select these two options. And then we could add up to five headlines. 
So let me go ahead. I'll expand and try to add all five headlines at a time. Let me see if I can think of five really quick. All right, these aren't amazing, but they're five. They make Google happy in terms of my ad strength, so I'm gonna keep going. And next, we can add up to five descriptions. So let me get five descriptions going here. We can add up to five. I stopped at three, because Google gave me the full check mark on descriptions, but I didn't mention character counts earlier. So 90 characters for a description, very common with all the other campaign types within Google, but we do get a little bit longer headlines. We can see each of my headlines were up to 40 characters. I'll always take the additional space. So I could go down, add two additional descriptions. That gave us five headline options, five description options. Next, I'll enter the business name. After that's done, you see that there are add URL options. It's the same tracking template setup that we saw within the more settings in the campaign creation. So ad level is the most specific you can get. If you want to use a different URL for your mobile device, you can do that. But next, you can look at your call to action text. If it's automated, which is the default option, Google will choose which call to action text to use, but you can be more specific. There are some default options here. Very typical, see more, learn more, get quote, download. And if I scroll back up to the preview, there you see the call to action line with the encouragement to go click on it to go to the website. So let me expand this and try to make this as large as I can so it's easier to see. If I go back up to the top, we can start looking at previews for it. And instead of clicking play, I'm just gonna breeze through the options. So there we get the YouTube home feed with someone scrolling on YouTube. If I click next, I do have to go down a little bit more to see. This would be the video that someone is watching on YouTube at the time. That's where the name of their channel and their channel name will be. And our discovery ad could show up underneath a video that a user is watching at the moment. There's another example of the YouTube home feed. Notice how there are different image sizes. So be sure with the ones that you're selecting, you have options for more of the vertical size as well as some square based images. Now we saw some YouTube ones. Let's look at Gmail. So here's what our ad could look like once it's opened up on Gmail. That's what we're seeing right now. If I click on closed, this is the initial preview that users are going to see. So I can see right now how my description is cut off on mobile Gmail. I can maybe consider optimizing it. And instead of Gmail, let's go to discover. And that's potentially what one of my ads could look like. Oh, that's a great one. And we need to stop because <laughs> it's not getting any better. So before you save your ad, go through as many previews as possible. Try to see what is going to look good, what images may need to be changed, we already saw the one example in the Gmail ad where the description was cut off, but also the logo was too small. I understand assets could be limited, but I at least want to know where I could potentially improve any further ads. For now, I'm going to create this ad. Before you move on, you do have the option to create a bunch of different ads. So even though Google has some control over the combinations, maybe you want to test out different landing pages. Maybe you want to test out different themes of the assets that you are using, or just maybe test out the text portion. We always like to have a few ads running at a time, so there is at least some ad testing going on. But for now, I'm just going to click Next. Feel free to check your settings, look for any errors, I forgot to name my ad group, whatever. If everything looks good, go ahead and publish your campaign. Now in the campaign creation process, we just set up one ad, and that was a regular discovery ad. But if you've seen our older videos, you know that there is a carousel format as well. So within the ad group, I'm going to go back to ads and assets. And then if I go and start to create a new ad, you will see a discovery carousel ad option. I'm going to kind of breeze through this one, but I do want to point out the differences. First, we can go up and just add a URL. Next, you may notice that we only get one headline and one description. The character lengths are the same. This is because the cards that we are going to add are going to take up the most space and be the main feature of the carousel ad. So let me just go ahead, choose the description and just add in a quick title. Next, we'll still need to add our business name. And then we can go down and start adding cards. You can see we get up to 10 cards, but we need at least two of them. So let's add our first one. I went ahead and just picked out an image and then we can customize the headline and the URL for each card. So maybe I wanted to showcase videos about Microsoft ads, update the headline. And instead of sending them to my main website, I can send them to a different URL that contains just the Microsoft videos. That's not a real URL that we have on our site, but that's what I would do. And then we can customize the call to action that each card will have. In this case, we're encouraging people to watch videos. Well, they don't have a view now option, so maybe see more or something. So this one is done. There we see the card is updated, but we need at least a second one. So let's create another card. Not saying I would use these images, but that's the one that we already had uploaded. Update the headline again for the second card. 
change the URL. So we're sending people just to the videos about Quora and then choose whatever call to action I want. Done with this one. And now we have two cards. And like I said, you can go up to 10. So you can see in the preview, people will be able to swipe by and see all the cards. And it gives you the opportunity to send people to a variety of different landing pages. If I scroll down a little bit, we'll need to add our logo. And then this ad is complete. We've used carousel ads to showcase specific products for certain companies, but we've also used it to showcase a variety of services, especially for a remarketing campaign where we're just targeting all visitors. Still might not be sure of the deeper intent, so let's showcase a variety of what our company can do. But this one's good for now, so I'll just click save. After your campaign is running, you'll be able to go ahead and check on the metrics. Right now it's defaulting me to one of my video columns that I have set and saved. But if you head on to columns, you can go ahead and modify your columns and you will see a lot of options that you'd normally get when reviewing your other campaigns. Go ahead and look at your clicks, impressions, costs, average CPC, but for discovery, you may wanna look at adding a few additional columns. Some of them may be around engagements. So the first click on a Gmail ad is when you are charged, and those first clicks will count as engagements. And then with engagement rate, of course, it's gonna be the number of times people clicked on the Gmail ad divided by the number of impressions that the ad received. Next, if I go and change it to interactions, this is the combination of all paid clicks for discovery. So whether on YouTube, Discover, or Gmail, all of those are gonna be combined as well as the interaction rate. And the last thing I wanna talk about for discovery ads would be reviewing the asset report. You can see I'm still in the specific discovery campaign that we just created. I went over to ads and assets and then clicked on assets. Clearly nothing's running yet, I'm telling you right here, Assets need to receive an impression within the last 30 days. So we'll get to look at the assets, like the images that I used, as well as my headlines and descriptions. Get a performance rating. I could adjust the columns to include different conversions because I chose leads, so I'm not going to have any value come through. But I'll be able to review if certain images are underperforming or if certain themes of images are performing better than other types. And that goes for the text portion as well. So it may take a little bit for it to start appearing within your account. Let your discovery campaigns run for a little bit. So when you first want to go and start reviewing the performance of your ads, besides going into the ads portion, be sure to check out your assets as well. I know that was just one example of what you could do when using the lead form objective. If you do anything with sales, you can add specific feeds and add additional personalization options. Unfortunately, those aren't the type of clients I have right now. But if you have any other questions on what you can or cannot do with a discovery campaign, feel free to ask anyone in the community and leave a comment below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the Super Thanks button.